Welcome friends, uh, in this video tutorial I am going to cover the three important considerations and three important parameters which are uh, need to be concluded uh, before going to the discussion about the oceanic environment and oceanic environmental conditions are the pH of the ocean water, uh, the dissolved oxygen of the oceanic water as, and third thing is uh, the temperature of the oceanic water. Now these three things are really really correlated with each other and they regulate the amount of uh, life that the ocean can possess. Okay. Now in this case in the left side we are having a table which, which signifies us, which tells us the effect of water temperature uh, 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 with the, the dissolved oxygen level and in the right side in this graph uh, we can see the effect of pH change according to the presence of carbon dioxide in the water. Okay, now all these things will count before uh, before discussing about the life form uh, that are present in oceanic water, right? Why? Because uh, in normal situation, if we think about, uh, say, uh, in, in in normal situation for a life to be existed, there are many parameters like the pH of the environment like the temperature of the environment which is denoted with caps T here and like the oxygen level of the environment all these things are important be, uh, before uh, thinking about the life uh, in a particular situation or, or in a position right now in this case uh, if we are looking at the dissolved oxygen limit due to the temperature variation we can find when we are having very low temperature like 0 degree celsius or 5 degree celsius temperature we can see we are having a really really higher amount of oxygen which is dissolved onto the sea water okay now first things first first let us talk about the amount of oxygen in different layer of o oceanic water so if i create a layer of oceanic water from this is the top layer this is uh, the end layer for example and this is the total sea level then we must have higher amount of oxygen at the surface level because it is uh, due to the direct exposure towards the environmental oxygen and we are having a less amount of oxygen in uh, the below layer so its oxygen level is low at the bottom layer oxygen level is high at the top layer it is true. Now if we look at this table it is also true. In every case as you can see there is a significant drop of a dissolved oxygen level in this water. So in, in 0 degree Celsius it is true and it also the higher temperature like 40 degree Celsius it is also true. Now that this is uh, the first thing you should notice about this table. Now the second important thing uh, this table is telling us is about the change of dissolved oxygen according to the variation of temperature. Now we can see here is uh, the temperature of uh, if we temp temperature goes for 0 to 40 degrees Celsius as you can see it is continuously increasing temperature. Uh, now as the temperature increasing in this bottom side we can see there is a significant decrease of uh, the oxygen or dissolved oxygen level that means we are having a dissolved oxygen level of 14.6 milligram per liter at 0 degree Celsius temperature but we are having uh, uh, less than a half of this dissolved oxygen at the 40 degree Celsius uh, temperature at the same surface area that means we are having the surface area in the hot environment or in the summer environment or very very hot temperatures this dissolved oxygen are released from the water so oxygen uh, uh, water uh, affinity to the oxygen for the water is tightly controlled uh, over the temperature barriers right so there is a particular limit for the water to hold on to oxygen uh, which is totally depend on the temperature and if we increase the temperature the water loses the affinity towards the oxygen so it will release the oxygens okay so uh, that is uh, what is uh, this this picture is actually telling us in moderate temperature like 15 uh, or 25 degrees celsius there are a significant uh, whatever there are 10 to uh, 9 to 10 uh, milligram per liter of oxygen which is dissolved which is fine for the life to sustain okay but if it go uh, drops uh, below 7 uh, milligram per liter of dissolved oxygen it can create trouble for uh, the living creatures at the surface level because at the surface level there are creatures which are uh, which are uh, what you can say evolved in such a way to tolerate the high t uh, high oxygen which need not actually tolerate which uh, they need the higher amount of oxygen for their respiratory purpose for their living uh, okay so if the oxygen level drops as the surface level due to the higher temperature they will uh, face difficulties for their living okay 
Now, uh, in, in the bottom layer, normally there are uh, very uh, few amount of oxygen dissolved in general cases. So if you look at the 3000 feet or less than 3000 feet, there are very few amount of oxygen is left there. But uh, as uh, it is a very lower or it is a, it is in depth, so it, it generally do not do not catch that much amount of heat due to its depth, due to its uh, uh, this this depth nature okay so as a result of this depth it usually do not have a higher amount of oxygen that's the first thing so you have lesser oxygen for living on and second thing as a result uh, of this same uh, consequence which is uh, the depth uh, you can receive less amount of heat that is also good for you so in this case everything is balanced for this uh, organisms which live on this place because uh, though they are not receiving higher amount of oxygen but there are uh, n not the presence of the higher temperature which can take out some oxygen from their, their self. So the oxygen level at the bottom maintains uh, in, in this moderate way of 6 point uh, of this 5 uh, 4 to 5 uh, milligram per li uh, liter okay but the variation of this temperature can really be lethal for the, those organisms who live at the surface layer because they are vulnerable to uh, heat and they are vulnerable to uh, the higher amount of oxygen which is from the air so they are receiving all these things together now if heat is increasing then they will lose some amount of oxygen but they are uh, pretend to live in, in the presence of higher amount of oxygen because they carry out their respiration with the help of this oxygen okay so that is a very important consideration about all okay now let us look at uh, to the um, to, to the um, relationship of pH to this dissolved carbon dioxide. Now pH is a very important uh, consideration because uh, in, a, in acidic pH which is a very uh, low pH and in, in basic pH which is very high pH in both uh, type of pH organism cannot sustain their life because uh, their cell and their metabolic purposes are designed in such a way that they can be carried out in the neutral environment which is uh, equal to uh, pH 7 right near about pH 7 like 6 to 8 or something like that will be fine for them to live on. There are exceptions uh, or there are exceptions of organisms which can uh, love to live in the acidic or basic environment but those are extremely rare and extremely uncommon. So we are not talking about them. We will be talking about all the generalized organisms which are living. So for them uh, the pH must be around 7 for their living. Now in this case if uh, we need to think about the dissolved carbon dioxide if we need to think about the pH. Why? Because if we dissolve carbon dioxide into water, it will form ion which is called the bicarbonate HCO3. Now this bicarbonate later converted into carbonate or sometimes it is along with the water molecules it reacted and it forms an acid which is called the carbonic acid. Now this carbonic acid is, uh, uh, is, is a key thing to lower down the pH of an environment because it is acidic so the pH will fall uh, from 7 to 3 or 4 or 2 something like that so as a result the water turn acidic and all the organisms in that water start to die because they are not adapted to live on this acidic environmental conditions so that's why we need to take this carbon dioxide or dissolved carbon dioxide amount uh, as consideration when we are talking about the life on this oceanic environments okay now here uh, if we think about this graph in the in the x axis we are having the ph and in the y axis we are having the percentage of total carbon uh, or carbon dioxide now the dissolved carbon dioxide as we are seeing this carbon dioxide is getting down as the ph is in uh, is is increasing so you can see the dissolved carbon dioxide if we are increasing the amount of carbon dioxide uh, you can see uh, this is the percentage of carbon if the percentage of carbon is reducing uh, that means we are gaining the pH, we are up, up regulating the pH, that means we, have a, we are having less carbon dioxide with the water, that means we are having less carbonate on the water, as a result we are uh, having a higher pH, but when we are pro producing higher uh, carbonate uh, or higher amount of bicarbonate, which is the acidic form of this carbon, which is a bicarbonate, if we increase the bicarbonate, we are, we are actually we are actually going uh, towards the, the this uh, this higher percentage of uh, carbon at this temperature now if if, uh, if we are going to a lower ph as a presence of this bicarbonate or dissolved carbon dioxide we are going towards the negative uh, or, or not negative the lower ph region okay so these are really confusing uh, but before going to that let us uh, first uh, talk about stuck to one particular thing which is uh, if we are uh, 
dissolving much more carbon dioxide that means we are producing bicarbonate we are producing car carbon dioxide we are producing carbonic acid which is uh, going to be acidic but sometimes when the bicarbonate is producing oh, when the bicarbonate which are produced are converted into carbonate and and this carbonate is not that much acidic it will drag our ph to a particular up region okay so that is an important thing you need to talk about okay so this this relationship is not linear as we can see in this picture this is not linear it is uh, sometimes it is increasing sometimes sometimes it is decreasing so it's a little bit complicated thing but uh, but uh, the water is influenced by the amount of dissolved carbon dioxide uh, and also by the equilibrium of the dissolved carbon dioxide with bicarbonate and the carbonate ion whatever we are looking at in this case is the equilibrium between the production of bi bicarbonate and carbonate ion now if we are having higher amount of bicarbonate ion which is going up we are having um, at a particular point we are having uh, uh, less ph and then we are going to the higher ph but at the higher ph level the bicarbonate ion uh, will fall uh, the concentration of bicarbonate will fall but the concentration of carbonate will rise now you can see from this picture uh, at the at the higher ph level the bicarbonate uh, concentration is getting drop and uh, the concentration of carbonate is getting up that means the presence of carbonate uh, will uh, lead to uh, the absorption of carbon dioxide and much more carbon at a higher pH level than the bicarbonate because if we think about uh, the the increase of the bicarbonate at a particular pH of 8 to 9 uh, but there will be less amount of carbonate at this particular pH you can see there uh, in there almost none amount of almost no amount of carbon uh, carbonate ion present at this pH right so uh, this is the equilibrium which is controlling whole system uh, for this dissolved carbon dioxide okay so normally uh, this carbon dioxide dissolved uh, dissolved carbon dioxide is helping us to understand whether the water can sustain life uh, due to the suitable pH or not. Okay, so that's it, and I hope it will help you. Thank you.